Hi everyone, this is Dimitri Programmatic with MarketChameleon.com. I had a question that came up uh, when you're evaluating an option strategy or an option price. What do you? What should you be looking at? Uh, the theoretical value or a back test of the option? And the answer is that both of these are telling you a little bit different information and I'll demonstrate to you what I mean. But really you, you can uh, look at both of them or just depending what you're trying to analyze. Now. Over here, you know, in SPY, you have a theoretical value here that you could change and make make different assumptions, or you have the ability to go and just back test and how did this option in the, in particular do in SPY with five trading days to go and this far away out of the money? How how would how would that perform over a long period of time? So let's take a look at first. I'm going to make an analogy to compare what a back test is doing and what a theoretical value is doing just to um, make it a lot more clearer. And as usual, I just like to paint a picture and step away from options and show an analogy of something else that's a little bit easier to understand. And let's just pretend over here that we have a business where we go and we buy a basket of apples on a farm and then we take the apples and then we sell them at our store. It takes us on average two weeks to sell the apples. Some apples we some apples we sell, some apples end up getting spoiled after two weeks because um, they expire and we have to throw out. So let's just run a back test on this strategy. And this would be a back test of our data to see how this strategy performed in our store. So over here we see. We buy on a farm, so the week one we buy it for two dollars fifty cents. We sell it later on average the basket for three dollars and fifty cents, so we made a profit of a dollar. And then the next week, two dollars twenty-five cents. We went to the farm, bought it. We ended up selling it for three seventy-five. We made a dollar fifty. Over here, we bought it two seventy-five. We sold it for two fifty, so that ended up being a loss of twenty-five cents, and so on. So just for illustrative purposes, I put over here in our data um, six weeks let's say six six weeks of data six um, different data points and now in our back test what we see is well on average this was a profitable strategy right on average we bought a basket for three dollars eight cents we sold it for three dollars 45 cents on average making uh, 37 and a half cents I just rounded these numbers and over here we see that out of the six this the six different observations that we had uh four out of six or two-thirds of the time it was profitable the rest uh one-third it was unprofitable so um it wasn't profitable every time on average it did work out and around two-thirds of the time this was profitable so so that that is the back test now before you go run out and actually do it you know let's then take a look at theoretical what is the theoretical value? And the theoretical value is it evaluates today's market price. So the back test looks at historically was this strategy profitable or not profitable? And then the theoretical value will look at today's market prices and doing an evaluation. So here's an example of a back test, let's say on earnings. Here, here we have the earnings option strategy back test screener. And what this is doing is going looking at three million different back tests for all the different symbols different strategies and let's say in this in this uh, particular stock um, if you did this strategy and you put it on one day before earnings took it off one day after earnings then your your it was profitable 67 percent of the time in the last 12 observations for an average return of one percent so the average of all these 12 observations the average return was one percent this is the amount of times it was profitable then you get these other statistics to go along with it. So that's showing you a back test of did the strategy tend to work or not work in during earnings. So now let's go and do an evaluation on today's market prices. And this is what I mean by that. I'm gonna go back to our illustration and let's now bring up today's market price. And let's assume today we go, we go to the farm and the farm wants four dollars for a basket of apples well now we have to determine should we should we buy it for four dollars today or not and as we can see 
even though this was profitable um, two thirds of the time, our average selling price, it doesn't matter what we bought it, our average selling price over here was $3.45, right? So that's really what we were concerned because if we buy today for $4, unless we have good justification to believe that we should be able to sell it for more than $4, our data is saying that today's market price looks overvalued, right? Because in the long term, if we bought it for $4 and then our, our average selling price is, remains $3.45, then we're expected to lose $0.55 cents, um, per basket of apples in the long term. And our expected win rate is only going to be so over here we see historically there's only one time only one time where we sold that we were able to sell it above four dollars every time so five out of six times right we would have sold it below four dollars and one time above so that's expected win rate one out of six and of course sometimes sometimes it may be justifiable to pay that price. And that's the next thing we have to look at. And let's pretend, let's pretend in this scenario that this week there happens to be a apple festival. And during this apple festival, there's a much higher demand for apples. People are making apple pies, making um, different different apple uh, types of um, like, you know, apple candy or whatever they do, but this apple festival is making the demand for apples go up. So now that we have this information, what we have to do is go back and look, well, how were the prices during a festival? Like perhaps this time, this this observation happens to be during the festival. So that changes the whole thing. And let's take an example over here. I'm going to go back to our options chain here. Let's look at Adobe here. And I brought this up. So we're going to look at the theoretical price, right? Not the taxes, but we're going to look at the theoretical price of Adobe for December. And I'm just going to pick like 315 call. So I'm going to click on this call over here for 450. I'm going to run an analysis here, theoretical value over here. I'm going to change it to six years of data. And if we did this strategy in the last six years, right? So if we held for 10, 10 trading days with this far away, a strike this far away, the ending value on average is $4.38. So you could see here, that's pretty fair. It's like right right in between. So buying it for four fifty, there's no obvious edge. But let's just change that scenario and say, well, I know that Adobe is coming out with earnings prior to this expiration. So let's look at only earning or only periods with their earnings. Forget about all the rest of the periods, just when there are earnings. I'm going to reload that strategy in the last six years. Now I could see that there's 24 observations. You know, here's the data. So it's only looking for earnings periods. And now everything's changed. Now we could see that on average, right? On average, the end value, it's converting all the percentages into a dollar value to make a compare to make a comparison to today's markets on average then value is 645 versus today uh the market price is 450 now it looks undervalued compared to the historical data and you can see that the win rate has also gone up All right this is non-earnings just any period and this is only earnings periods so you could see that went up and let's just go back to our example. So you could see here, when you see this type of stuff, right, then you say, well, can I justify what has changed? Should I be buying it for $4? Or if you can justify it, right, then you have these analytics to say, well, maybe I should be skipping it unless I could justify why am I paying $4 today if, if my end values Right? It doesn't matter that it was profitable, you know, uh, two thirds of the time because the starting points were different, right? Now you have to evaluate today's price and say, 
can I justify today's price of $4? Um, and if you can't, then, then perhaps you skip it and then move on to the next one. If you can, then that's fine. Then, then you can make a, at least a better, more informed decision. Hopefully this was helpful to everyone and see you guys in the next video.